Let's look at some important structural details of hydrogen halide molecules. For instance, HF. Let's first make sense of his bonding by understanding the orbital arrangement of the fluorine in this molecule. Well, remember, this is the Lewis dot structure right here. Let's first determine fluorine's hybridization, and we learned in another online lecture how to quickly do this, and that is simply to determine the steric number of fluorine. If we count up here, we'll notice that we have a total number of four, which means that he is sp3 hybridized. So let's get a picture of his hybridization. Remember, all atoms that are sp3 hybridized have four sp3 hybridized orbitals. Now let's look at the bonding here. Remember, one of fluorine's sp3 hybridized orbitals is going to head on overlap with the s orbital of a hydrogen. So that explains his one and only sigma bond. This gives us three sp3 orbitals left, and look at our fluorine, notice it has three lone pair electrons. So basically each lone pair is housed in each one of these sp3 hybridized orbitals. So this is our orbital description of a hydrogen halide molecule. This orbital description is true for all the hydrogen halide molecules. For instance, it's true for what we saw HF, it's also true for HCl, HBr, and HI. However, let's pay attention to some very important structural details here. If you remember from general chemistry, the size of an atom increases as you go down the periodic table, which means the atom iodide is much bigger than the atom fluorine, and Br and Cl would be between the two. If you were to compare the bond lengths and the bond strengths of these four molecules, you would get this right here. Notice the trends. Bond length is increasing as we move from the HF down to the HI, and bond strength is decreasing as we move down these molecules. Take a few seconds and notice these trends from the chart. The orbital arrangement can explain these trends. For instance, look at the HF bond. We know that that's simply a head-on overlap of a 2sp3 hybridized orbital and the 1s of the hydrogen. Remember, the orbital is 2sp3 hybridized is because we hybridized the second shell of the fluorine atom. I'd like you to know that the HCl bond below is also a head-on overlap of an sp3 hybridized orbital and a 1s of a hydrogen. However, in order to hybridize chlorine, you need to hybridize his third shell, which means he would end up with four level three sp3 orbitals. Because we're hybridizing the third shell of this Cl atom, this means his hybridized orbitals are going to be bigger. Notice this trend continues. To make sense of the HBr bond, you would have a head-on overlap this time of a 4sp3 hybridized orbital and the 1s orbital of the hydrogen. Again, this is because we're hybridizing the fourth shell of Br. And lastly, the HI bond would be a head-on overlap of a 5sp3 hybridized orbital and the 1s orbital of the hydrogen. This helps us understand why bond length increases as you move from HF down to HI. So basically, when you hybridize orbitals in higher numbered shells, you end up with longer hybridized orbitals. And these longer hybridized orbitals contribute to simply longer bonds. This is why the HI bond would have the longest bond length. But how does this help us understand bond strength? Why does it get less as you move down to the HI? Well, let's compare the HF to the HI. It just so happens that two sp3 hybridized orbitals have a greater electron density than five sp3 orbitals. Think of it this way. The two sp3 orbitals are smaller and therefore bring the electrons closer together whereas the 5sp3 orbital are larger and the electrons have more room to spread out, making them less electron-dense. 
What we need to understand here is that greater electron density leads to more overlap of the orbitals. And more overlap means a stronger bond. So the less electron density of the 5 sp3 orbital would have less overlap and therefore have a less strong bond. So that is why we get the trends that we get here. What's important for organic chemistry is not so much memorizing this, but just understanding how hybridization and molecular orbital theory helps us make sense of molecules. We're going to be doing this constantly through organic chemistry. If we want to know why a particular molecule behaves the way it does, we might need to look at the hybridization and the orbital arrangement of that particular molecule. This is why we should really take the time now to understand hybridization.